Yo, Yo, Adam, how's it going? How's it going, Nikki? Thank you both for joining on this one um, and uh, helping me usher in stream 100. I did not think I would get to triple yeah, digits. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. It's still this crazy that like <laughs> <laughs> how um, I, I mean, at this point, I, I have streams lined up all the way through the end of like May. Like it, it's not been that hard to continue to find yeah. people just to hang out and talk about Power BI stuff. But okay, going into like, oh, I'm going to get like a couple months in and I'm just going to run out of speakers or topics there's no way i could just keep this going this easily without i trying to i just scheduled tomorrow's stream this morning you're all the way out in may <laughs> that's 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 amazing better, that better blows said my it, mind. it's yeah well it's just nice to, to to you know and a lot of them honestly are, are i know a person will be on this date but not necessarily uh what the topic might be that but like hey yeah. can you be on at the end of may yeah. um but yeah i mean it, it's super fun and i think honestly by the time i run out of topics i um managed to find a person to come back on who has a new topic anyways yeah. it, pretty common for most of us who do the road conferences where we usually have like one or two new topics each year that we yeah. you know want to to demo around yeah. and, and tour so yeah um very cool that i got to this point it's not something i expected but um adam i know well, like i definitely go ahead yeah so i was gonna ask nikki a question because i know like i've known nikki for a while too and uh like you know we all we've all done conferences so nikki I don't know. You just like doing the one topic all the time, right? Or do you spice it up? You, you get interested in other things, right? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, yeah. Lots of new things uh, um, happening. Uh, well, every every month, of course, in uh, in yeah. my desktop, but also um, um, yeah. In my previous employer, I, I used to do a lot of uh, administration and governance. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, some nice topics uh, around there. Um, I mean, we, yeah, we had an, um, a large Power BI implementation, or at least for me, large. Not, not yeah. Worldwide large, but um, yeah. Power BI Premium, and uh, yeah, we had to do some adoption and, and training of users. So um, yeah, that's that's some nice topics also to to yeah, give tips and tricks to to other uh, people to, to learn from. So yeah, yeah. Well, and I think as you're you're mentioning, Nick, it's uh it's good to be able to, f to find that the, the pulse in the community and be able to to, to give stuff for them as well that you you know is going to be something that's not only useful but. It, people are just going to want to uh, come and hang out and watch or, or learn um, from one any of those. But happy to have you on for the first time um, for this. Uh, uh, for people tuning in, I think the flow is just yeah. just having a little bit of fun at the beginning here with, with Adam as the, uh, kind of a surprise guest star to just talk about that. Uh, the reason, Adam, I wanted to bring you on is um, I think between you and Matthew Roach, uh, you, he was my first guest ever on any live stream that I ever did. And I definitely took a page from some of your stuff and gotten plenty of advice for you over the years on just YouTube management and everything else. So um, yeah, it's been a journey. I, yeah. Yeah. So I, I kind of wanted to bring it a little bit full circle um, yeah. in, in terms of uh, getting you uh, back on for that and having you just hang out with us for a little bit. And it's been fun to obviously like the growth that Patrick and I have had on the guy in a cube and just watching you grow in your journey as well. And we chat about, it's always nice to chat with folks on the side about, you know, the, the technical aspects of things and how we do this. It's not, <laughs> You know, we can't just talk with anyone. I can't talk with my wife about it because she's just like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Well, Patrick, Patrick doesn't exactly. necessarily, he, he's, Patrick come a long way as well. Like he, he understands a lot of it now. And I remember in the beginning that was, that was, uh, he's just like, I don't know, just tell me the clicks. <laughs> so, well, I mean, it, even, even, just, even to your, road, right? go ahead, Nikki. Scenes, yeah. What was that, Nikki? Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work behind the scenes, right? It's not just streaming to YouTube, but uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, getting all these scenes to work appropriately, getting the audio in, like, and maybe yeah. some of you might have just seen, like, I went orange to white. Like, I was just talking to Adam even before this, like, auto what, white balance. So, what settings do I need? Okay, there's probably an auto white balance on my camera I need to adjust. It's the yes. little geeky, nerdy all stuff. Right. Um, some of you might have noticed that I just, you know, I have this um, new uh, microphone that I bought. I uh, got the new HyperX one. I wanted to add RGB because you know, everybody likes RGB. Um, so, swap that out as one of my Christmas presents to myself. Um, and added some new light bars behind my my screen so it's fun to just get techie and keep upgrading your gear you know it's it's its own oh. little hobby for sure and i had him's like uh like how, how you even have i think a, a flight chair and a flight simulator right oh i do it's point. a whole flight sim rig right yeah over yeah there. yep so Sitting right next um, to my yeah. work desk and it's very distracting uh, how uh <laughs> How much would you say on like all of your equipment over the years? Uh, is that even a number that you're like willing it's, to admit it's an like, how obscene, much you spend? It's an obscene amount. 
Okay. Um, where it's so I remember Breno Ozar has got a great blog post he did where he talked about like a live stream setup from starter to bananas. And so he had four different stages. Um, my setup was the bananas setup. Um, and that was before where I'm even at now. So I went beyond that. Um, so beyond bananas. Wow. Yes, beyond bananas. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, it's insane. It's, it's amazing. I, I've equated, uh, especially in the tech community, gear purchases are a lot like tattoos. Once you, uh, once you buy that first item, you you start to go down that road of either <laughs> a tattoo or upgrades for your, your home setup. It's a lot easier to buy your second and your third and your fourth, and you realize 15 items later and you, you, you have an office that is 60% <laughs> well, of your home value. I I mean, you know, there there was a discussion at one point when uh, the, the current camera I have now, when I went to my wife and I was just like, I mean, it's... It's a used camera, so I'm not buying it brand new, but it's still six thousand dollars. So, you know, that was that was a whole conversation. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. I realized I needed to turn on VMix social. I, so, uh, Stephen had a had a question for you that I'm trying to actually get to show up on the screen now. But uh, how many um how many recordings of Patrick do you Bang. have as a hotkey? This is bananas. I've got there four. we go. What the one. French toast? And then I've got one of mine. <laughs> it's like Kerberos. It just works. That's okay. I like I like yeah, that one. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I captured Patrick. It's funny. But I can always well, I always bring yeah. Patrick with me. Just a, just a, a little bit of of him sprinkled around here and there. He he can he can join us in spirit. Um but it's <laughs> like uh, you think you're at how many um at this point 320,000? Yes. Yes. Yeah, right 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 around there. Uh yeah. Five Four, what do you think? Four years until you get two million? Uh, Less? I don't know that we'll I'll, we'll ever reach that. You don't think <laughs> so? That's not even something I think about. Okay. Well, I mean, how many how many new we're people just, do you get a month? I it's it, like for me like those numbers. I'm like we're just doing the work. Like we enjoy True. doing it. It's fun. Um, we see the growth. Um, like we always. This is one thing. Like we always love seeing all the new faces in the live streams that we do, and just yep. new folks that engage with the content. Um, and that's why we do it. It's 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 really about uh, that. That gives us energy when we do that. And now that we can go back, we've been going back to in-person conferences as well. And being able to connect face to face has been amazing. So um, that, yeah. that's helped us realize like what we're doing is not because you know like normally I'm just talking to a camera and it's that's really yeah. hard. For, it's harder for Patrick than it is for me. He gets energy from the in-person and being like getting the energy from the room and. Yep. Yep. Um, so camera's hard for him. So it's like I've definitely seen him re-energize because we've been doing in person again. And so being able to translate that back out into the videos is is always great. Yeah, it's totally different. Yeah, hey, wait, I, I agreed. And I, I think some people can can operate a lot more effectively online versus in person. They're very different itches to scratch to a degree. Like I, I love in person yeah. events. Um and I'm super happy for like sequel bits and all this other stuff again coming back this year. But I think to your point, like these streams very similar to me like it you know as you mentioned like you don't get new viewers really through, through live streams that's not a way to like to, to grow your audience that much but I, the live streams are great for us because it's a way to connect with folks that, that, and, that's what i mean have yeah, that exactly. discussion the thing i love i love 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 so i, I see so so i see donald there i see alex is in the chat um mm -hmm. i see a lot of from data is king is there like so these are all folks i i recognize just from the community yep. in general um, exactly. And I love the community aspect of it, right? And so people engaging in the chat, helping people out. Uh, like for me, that's that's why we do the live streams. We do it because we love the connection to the community. I, I remember even like talking to Matthew Roach a lot. Uh, like he even told me like when he when we have him on the stream or even when he's just engaging with the chat when the pandemic was happening, uh, he mentioned he's like, this is just this helps me to be able to connect to the community as we're all locked yeah. down. Um, and so that aspect of, of just keeping that community kind of spark alive is, uh, has been amazing with live streams. Um, and so I'm, I'm very happy that technology exists. Yeah. I mean, I, that's largely why I even yeah, started Donald. this in the first place is it just, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it was right as the, uh, the beginning of, um, the pandemic and it's just like, man, I just need a way to connect to people. I was always using tabletop simulator on steam to play board games yeah. with friends online. And so I remember, just, yeah. I remember when the pandemic hit. So we actually, we started doing the live streams right before the shutdown. Like our first one was February of 2020. Um, oh. And so we already bought all the equipment and then we were like already positioned well and then everything got locked down. We're like, oh, well, I guess, you know, 
we're good. <laughs> and then everyone yep. started scrambling because video became king at that point and everyone's trying to scramble to do it. And now we had all the shortages of equipment. Everyone's like, how did you get that? I'm like, cause we had it before. <laughs> yeah. So it just, it worked out. Um, so that was, so we were, we were well positioned at that point, luckily for, uh, doing the live streams and continuing to engage from a video content perspective during the pandemic. Um, but it was fun because that's when like you and I started talking about video and I started talking with other folks. It was, it was great to be able to share some of that mm -hmm. knowledge of how to do it. Um, and to help people kind of get up to speed on, on getting set up and getting on YouTube and, and all of that. So, yeah. Yeah, the the equipment shortage across tech and like graphics cards and everything are, are outside of getting pre-built was was crazy. It's finally yeah. coming down now, but oh, it's um, easy now. Yeah, I just yeah. I built two brand new computers. Um, like did right you borrow like holidays. two forty eighties or some crazy forty like, nineties? Yeah, they, they were full on like state yeah. of the art as of they were state of the art as of October twenty twenty two. Um, forty nineties are the yeah like that. That's it was a forty ninety like sixteen gigs. Uh, 32 and gigs? No, they're... What are they? Uh, 4080, I, I thought it was only like they're 8 gigs. Yeah. They are... Uh, so, so yeah, they're they're beefy. Um, and then uh, I also got the 13th gen Intel processor. So, nice. this is bananas. This is bananas. <laughs> yeah, I got two of them. <laughs> so, they're, they're amazing. I, they're, they're, they're great. It's like just geeky question on that, but they're, they're not SLI compatible. They're in two different machines or are they, are they SLI together? They're, no, no, they're two different machines. So, okay. Uh, yeah. So the 4090 yeah. doesn't support SLI anymore. They've, they've I, I don't think any of the new NVIDIA ones nope. do for the, like the 3080, 4080, 4080, because they're yeah. one most most uh, games are not coded to really use utilize yeah. that, and uh, so like no, we'll just we'll just give you a really 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 strong graphic card. Just just have one. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, but uh, I do know at some point, um, Adam, um, you have to run for some stuff. But I also want to give Nikki yeah. you some space uh, for. Uh, that the topic that we're going to go into today and power ups and everything else, but um, yeah, I think this is a great way to start. Uh, really, just like yeah, I love it. Is issuing in number one hundred, and I'm excited to hit number two hundred, which I'm sure will be in another yeah. about two years from yeah. now. Yeah. So once you get, it, it's funny how you get to a certain point, um, and you're like, oh, like oh, this feels like so beyond my reach, and then you get there and you're like, oh, the next one's gonna be easy. Like this is fine. Um, so the 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 one and only milestone that I still want to hit, and I at this point. I have tried most things that we've, we've discussed plenty at length of like, what, what can I do to get some more accelerated growth, which it, it's, it's just been nice and consistently four to 600 a month for about two years now. And, um, so I, I think I'm happy with that. I've just accepted that for outside of, I'm trying some shorts, but like that last milestone that I would love to hit is just having a silver play button somewhere. Uh, I think in five to 10 years, I'll, I'll probably get that if I continue to do content, but, uh, it would be nice to get a silver play button from YouTube just, for the hundred thousand subscriber mark. Just keep, just keep trying new stuff, man. Push the boundaries. Yeah. Try, try breaking out of the mold and get uncomfortable. That's my biggest thing. Uh, is you got to get uncomfortable. If if you're not, if you're comfortable, you're in the wrong spot. Yeah, I guess if you've hit too much of a rhythm, that's true with anything, right? Okay, if you're yeah, comfortable. Yeah, that's, that's fair. You're not making progress. Keep reinventing yourself and well, yeah yeah well it's following trends to a degree as well too like the one thing that i just i know this will be the last like little youtube conversations is the uh <laughs> <Sorry>. um <laughs> uh i i do try to avoid the clickbaity stuff like there's a there's a small degree of like you know hey top top five best practices on uh filtering like that that's fine but it's the you know like uh, 10 things number eight will surprise you kind of stuff like that where it or the um never have to do this again it'll blow your mind like I, there, there's a, there's a, a threshold of hyperbole that I try not to pass where, or where it slightly misinforms, um, the, uh, I'll just say like, you know, the videos were like, I'm going to quit YouTube now because of this thing. Like, oh, it's like at the last five, 60 seconds, I'm not actually going to quit. I'm actually going to stick around. Like those are those things where it's a bait and switch. I just, I, it gets too much into the cringy space for me that I, I try to hopefully not portray in my thumbnails or other stuff like that yeah my big things is have fun with it and get uncomfortable not in a bad way but yep. you know what i mean <laughs> like try exactly, things yeah. that, that make yeah. you a little like you're afraid of it a little bit like that's where you want that's what's going to push you so all right. all right nikki we will i will let you get to it i've got to jump for something else but reed congratulations on the 100th stream and uh yeah uh howdy to everyone in the chat Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining Adam for this. And yeah. um, we'll have you back on at some point. Yeah.
All right. Cheers. Awesome. We'll see you. Cheers, Roy. There you are, Nikki. Yes. Excellent. But yeah, let's uh, let's chat a little bit about uh, what we'll be getting into today. Yeah. Um, the Power Platform, right? Um, I've been um, uh, well working with Power BI here for quite some time already. Um, um, and you, you started with Power Pivot um, when that was a thing. Um, so um, yeah, in my, I think five six years ago, I also started in um, uh, in an internal uh, job at a wealth manager, so uh, yeah, a bank in the Netherlands. Um, and that was my first internal job, so not as a consultant. And um, well, I started in data warehousing there, and uh, so on-premises data warehousing, SSIS and mm -hmm. SSRS, so reporting services also. Um, and uh, yeah, that was 50% of my job, I think. And the other 50 was um, well, yeah, setting up Power BI, uh, helping it evolve in the company, um, governing the, the, the environment. Um, they started just with the Power BI Pro licenses, but quickly got to yeah, like 700 licenses. So they, they acquired premium. Um, well, that took some other stuff to, to take care of, uh, managing the capacity, also getting new users on board and getting them up to speed on, uh, yeah, on Power BI, on, on development. So that's, um, yeah, and, and in, in, uh, in, the, in the years to, that I've been there, yeah, we also started um, uh, yeah, working with Power Apps and uh, Power Automate. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's, that's actually uh, quite different from Power BI. It's, it, it is yeah, together called the Power Platform, but um, it's, it's a little bit differently managed. So you have environments in, in, um, in Power Automate and Power Apps, for example. Uh, that you don't have in, in, uh, in Power BI. It's more around workspaces, right? And, um, uh, and distributing apps. Um, um, yeah, you also have um, some limitations in there. So uh, you have different licenses and connectors that you can use in, uh, in, in, yeah, in, uh, in apps and, uh, and Power Automate. So um, yeah, there's some different things that you have to take, uh, take into account uh, when using uh, those, but they do work uh, oh, pretty smoothly together, as you will see here today. So, um, well, and, uh, and a bit to, um, to to paraphrase what you're saying, I, I think one of the reasons that I think leveraging Power BI uh, is is so powerful to a degree is because of the platform that is provided by Microsoft. Uh, there, are, there's a lot of things that Power BI does well. Some things it doesn't do quite as well. It it will be thanks to, <laughs> thank you, Adam, a lot uh, for that. Just a little heart there. Um, but uh, the uh, it's getting better at visualizations. It's not the best, but it, it is improving. But the modeling is second to none. But in conjunction with just Power BI, you have all of those things that the platform can do with the automations, the integration with Office, the uh, the integration with Azure and everything else. So I think a lot of the power of using Power BI comes from the, um, the integration with everything else and how cohesively it works with everything um, and the integrations with that. Whereas other tools work well-ish, with other products but then if one product updates sometimes the connector breaks with another product because the teams aren't really communicating with each other so uh, i think there, there's a lot of ways to you know build a house which is your power bi thing and then you can easily modularize and add rooms add other things add a garage you know things like that to add all these different products that that uh, work very uh, symbiotically with each other oh no we lost uh, I think we just lost your audio. Yep, well, all right, we lost your audio. Interesting. Yeah, double checking my settings, not coming in now. All right. Mm hmm. I don't give him self membership. Uh, yeah, check, maybe you switch off and on from your mic. The video at least is still coming through. All right. Well, everyone bear with us for just a minute. We'll get this fixed up when you're muted and then unmuted. Okay. So, I'll give it another 20 seconds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, we can just hang up the call, recall, and hopefully that will fix it. Turn it on and off if we need to do that. So, 
I'm gonna spend another few seconds to see if we can flip the switch. Otherwise, I'll just do a direct call with you. It's technically, this is the first time that I've done a, a two call thing with the tool and then have somebody drop in the middle of it. So I'm wondering if it's related to that. So yeah, let's do this. I'm gonna hang up Nikki. We'll just call back and then everything, hopefully we'll just click in, fingers crossed with the Murphy's Law. This, this, and we're going to do a call. Mm -hmm. Wave the magic wand. And we're connecting. Let's see. Okay, I got your video. Let's see. Okay. And then. No. Still no audio coming from you. Yep. That's really weird how it just like stopped. Yeah. As Adam says, when in doubt, reboot. Nothing coming in. All right. Well, let's see. Yeah, let's give it a few more seconds and maybe we need to try a reboot. Let's be like, Adam, cancel your meeting. Come and hang out for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed from my end. Buying the latest graphics card could work as well. Yeah, selling a kidney. <clears throat> I might just start going into some storytelling mode. Still, still nothing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try this first. Just completely close Skype. And let me call you back. So just like completely shut it down and uh, we'll do a recall again. <clears throat> All right, so I'll let him do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, so to, to Adam's build, at least for the audience saying, he, and he, he has I don't, like, multiple PCs with 4090s. I am nowhere, I'm not at that level yet. Uh, I did the uh, the the prefab, um, pre-built machine that from Alienware. So the one that I'm running is just a... Alienware bought two years ago, but I just basically specced out everything. So 120 gigs of RAM. I got my 3080. I could not justify a 3090, which costs like an extra $1,500 um, with only marginal gains for like cyberpunk and stuff. But that's that's running pretty well. And it's like a it's the eight or 12 core, like top of line Intel that I'm sure this will uh, work itself to another five to seven years for me. Um, maybe just need an upgrade a graphic card here or there. But I, I definitely bought a gaming PC justified as a work PC. Um, I do a little bit of gaming with my ultra wide that I have. It's fun to, you know, if you're, if you're gonna work hard, you gotta play hard too. All right, so um, let's give Nikki a call again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I honestly, Adam, you've done something that I've not seen before is uh, gifting memberships. I know you can do that in Discord. I have never seen that, uh, or not Discord, Twitch, but I've never seen that actually done in uh, YouTube. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming the 4090 at least is probably for your flight simulator um, computer at, at that level. But yeah, like we, how many people did we have in the stream? 21. It, it, I, that, that's actually very true um, for, for video editing, um, 100%. The, uh, the laptop that I had used to have the integrated chip. That's where I used to do my video edits. And I bought a, a business laptop that has an NVIDIA graphics card, technically a business graphics card. But it, graphics cards are really good for Power BI. Um, and they're also really useful um, for video editing. Like Camtasia flies like a cheetah now um, when I do mine. Like, sure, Adam, you probably use the Adobe stuff, but the... It's a, it is pretty amazing how data analytics and um, gaming go hand in hand. Like a lot of gaming 
machines are actually a little bit cheaper for similar specs than a business laptop with a business uh, GPU. So uh, I've known multiple MVPs who have bought gaming laptops uh, specifically because it makes Power BI and the Veritapak engine run faster because it can leverage the graphics processor to a degree um, and like better quality, faster RAM and everything. I'm just gonna ping Nikki and let me know what I can call you. Or Adobe Premiere, that <clears throat> that's right. Premiere is the, is the main editor and then After Effects for the other one. I'll uh, run a VM uh, with uh, an RTX 3080-ish. I'll just put it on screen while I'm looking through this stuff. Uh, ha you know, I really, I really want to play Half-Life Alex um, a lot, but I cannot justify a thousand dollar VR setup. Um, but that actually, I'm, I should probably be able to. I'm hoping there's, there's got to be a place in Seattle somewhere that rents that. I mean, heck, uh, Valve is, you know, headquartered here, close by me. So there's got to be a way to get my hands on a on an equipment for that to play the game and just return it because I'm sure my computer could run it. <laughs> Thanks for joining, Adam, um, for sure. But yeah, that, that, that is the one game that I really do wish I could play. It is not Half-Life 3, but it's the closest thing that we could get to it. Um, sadly that they canceled that game. But yeah, I have, out of curiosity, is, uh, what's, um, what are some people's gaming setups that they have in there? Might as well just riff off of the chat a little bit here. Uh, does, does, has anybody actually purchased, besides Adam, any of the new 40, uh, 4080s, 4090s? I've, I've thought about it, but I can't justify myself to buy the 4000 4, series because I already have a 3080. Um, and it seems like not too much of a gain between those two for most games that are out there. But I do know that they're at least ba back on sale. But apparently the sales for them have been marginally low. Uh, NVIDIA has like one of its worst quarters it's had in years. Okay, cool. Nikki's ready. Let's give this a go. Bring him in. This is fun. I've, I just get to you know, hang out and riff for a little bit, so start pulling out my jokes at some point. All right, wave the fingers. The call is connecting. Fingers crossed. Oh, okay. Oh, something's happening. Let's see. The video is going to come in. I got, I got your video. Hmm. It's really weird. Like, yeah, I'm just no audio from you. And there's no like, there's no hardware button that, that turned off the mic or anything like that. All right. Yes, I can hear you. Let me do one thing. Okay, let me configure one new thing, I think. Ah, that's right. Okay, here. Here. I think we're going to finally fix this. Testing one, two, three. Okay, got it. All right. So we're all good to go, and we are golden. Okay, just get the little video up, and uh, yeah, we're, we're good and set. Okay, perfect. There we go. All right, Murphy has been satisfied. He is, he's quieted down and everything's now working again. Cool. Oh yeah, board games are great. Um, but yeah, so, okay, we're all good to go. No problem then from this. So yeah, let's uh, pick it off. We were talking just about the general concepts of the Power Platform and more of the uh, the cohesiveness and integration, which is, as I was mentioning, one of my favorite portions of it. And I think we'll see lots of great examples from you uh, today as well on some of the, the many different ways that you can add power to your BI stack by leveraging many of the other tools within Microsoft. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, let's go ahead and have you use the share screen and then that way I can pop that up onto the, uh, the call. Oh, I see what I need to do here to do. Almost there. Okay, now you should be able to hear him.
Okay. So, we uh, do have audio, right? I have your audio. They're mentioning no, so right. I'm... Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me... Uh... Yeah, I, I definitely can get you. I'm just making sure that I yeah. have a thing turned on so they can hear you as well. So I have um, dedicated. It is setting audio inputs to master. So they should be getting your feed on the master input. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just need, I just want somebody to confirm in the chat. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. They say okay. yes. All right. Now we're good to go. Perfect. Um, yeah. And um, on, yeah, on Skype, use the lower right to click share screen. Yeah, I will. Cool. That's nice. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, put a link in the chat already. Uh, it should work. Yeah, that's nice. Um, <clears throat> and I will explain in a, a little bit what that link uh, is about. Perfect. Um, so no, don't forget the other. Uh, start sharing. So it should be coming through. Coming through. And yes, I have it. And we are now going to. Uh, all right. Transition over to this one. There we go. OK. OK, cool. Oh, sorry for all the, the hassle. Um, no worries. Let's hope, uh, yeah, let's hope it uh, keeps working. Um, so the. Um, the link I shared in the chat uh, is actually about a, uh, it goes to a form that you're seeing a screenshot of here. Um, it has like four or five questions in it. Um, and it's, um, it's, it is to get from some data from, from you into my uh, dashboard. And it's actually showing uh, on here. So this is the, the dashboard I'm showing. And as you see, the, the, uh, the answers that you put in are uh, automatically um, coming into this dashboard. So we'll come back to this uh, in a minute. And then I will just first do a, a little bit of an introduction on the, on the topic. Um, so I'm, I'm curious if anyone uh, recognizes this, um, this logo or icon, what you want to call it. Um, it's powerful alone, better together. So it's actually from the, um, the, the power platform. Um, no, the, the, what's it called? Um, Business Application Summit. There was a, um, Contest who could uh, come up with the best, uh, well, let's call it a logo, mm -hmm. um, for the Power Platform. Um, being, uh, well, at, right now there are um, uh, five products in the Power Platform. Uh, back then there were four. But how they connect to each other and how they are better together, right? So they have more value if you use them together than, uh, than the, they have alone. Uh, and this was actually the winner of that, uh, of that contest. Um, I don't see it that often, but um, I think it's quite uh, quite nice. We actually should do a, should do a new contest maybe for uh, <laughs> um, for adding the, the power pages um, into the into the mix. Um, so um, uh, start with the power platform. Um, I'm just going to start with an overview and and going to um, well some examples of of how we can use it uh, together and. I'm also going to um, well, well, deep dive into uh, more sophisticated examples uh, along the way. Perfect. So, yeah, if there's any questions uh, from the chat or from you, then uh, just uh, uh, chime in. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine. I'll throw those on as, as they come up. Yeah. Um, well, seeing the, the people in the chat, um, I'm, I'm guessing they, they know what the, what's, well, the, the Power Platform and, uh, and Power BI uh, is but let's do a, a quick overview. So the Power Platform consists of um, um, of Power BI, of course, and that is um, the the product to gain uh, insights out of your data. And um, yeah, when you gain those insights, then the other products can be used to uh, to take actions on that on that on those uh, those insights. And um, well, Power Apps is more for uh, creating apps, um, application development. Um, you can automate your process with uh, Power Automate, and you can create chatbots with the uh, virtual agents. Um, they all tie together with um, well, the Dataverse. It was uh, first called uh, CDM, so they call a data model. There's 
all kinds of uh, connectors that you can use uh, to connect to different data sources. Also to um, uh, connect the different products together. So in Power Outlet, for example, you have uh, uh, triggers that you can use to, um, uh, to start a uh, process and also actions that you can use to, um, uh, well, to, to do, do certain actions in, uh, in that flow. And well, the latest um, kit on the block is, uh, is for Power Pages and that's then for uh, yeah, low-code, no-code website development. So I have a few examples today. Um, and the first one is actually the one that I'm uh, uh, that I uh, put the link in the in the chat. So showing live results from uh, from a questionnaire on uh, on screen. Um, you can have a look if we have some uh, some more. Yeah, it takes a little bit of refresh, but um, I just want you to actually be there. Let's put it in here. Cool. Um, as you saw the the. the the answers are coming live in um, uh, into the dashboard when um, um, when you enter them in the form. So that's that's the nice uh, part about it. I don't have to refresh anything or refresh the page or the data set. That's just uh, coming through. So that's the first example that I um, just want to show a, a, a quick walkthrough of that um, uh, that solution. Uh, the next one is a little bit different, but um, quite similar. It's using a power app to enter the data. So it's the first one is more getting um, getting data from um, from the audience, right? So into the into the uh, dashboard, and the next one is uh, if I want to enter the data myself, uh, for example, for for having a quiz and uh, and want to, to enter the name and the score for for people, for example. Uh, and mm -hmm. um, I explicitly mentioned dashboard because this is really a dashboard and not a report. So that's why I uh, um, I called it a dashboard here. Um, and another thing you can do with Power Apps is um, what we use, um, usually call write back in Power BI. So that's um, you can uh, like edit the data in Power BI, right? Not uh, the real data in Power BI, but the data from the data source. So if you're, for example, using a, um, uh, an Azure SQL database as your data source in uh, Power BI, you can connect Power Apps to that database and then edit the data uh, via that Power App and then um, uh, connect that back to Power BI uh, and, and yeah, have that Power App also in the Power BI report. So that's a solution that we'll uh, have a look at there. And the last one is um, yeah, using Flow to, um, to trigger and, and set up actions in, in Power BI. Uh, for example, uh, using refreshes to, um, uh, yeah, to refresh your data set, but also uh, you can also check uh, data flows, for example, if they are refreshed and, and set up some actions uh, on top of that. So the first one, um, so the actions are, uh, are quite easy. You just have to create a form in, uh, in forms, Microsoft forms. Then we have a, a streaming data set in Power BI, so a push data set, where we um, um, get the, the data from the form um, via uh, the, the flow, put it in that streaming data set, and then create a report and a dashboard on top of that. So let's have a, um, a quick look. So this is just uh, uh, the form I created. And um, depending on the, the, the type of question, you can, yeah, you can have a little bit more work in, uh, in Power BI. For example, um, this multiple choice one, um, you have to write a little bit of text to, to get that um, uh, out in a, uh, yeah, in, a, in a good way and in, into your report. Um, because if you look over here, um, this is the. These are the answers from that um, from that report from that question actually. So, I've seen similar Nikki as well with um, and I mean it's been a few years since I did this, but at one point I, I used I, I I created a form that every type of input, including I think star ratings and a few others, and it yeah. definitely kind of spits out a bit of code if you're trying to access the, that using the using the Power Query connector. So there's a little bit of data wrangling you have to do to, to actually parse out the correct um, selected values and not all the other. Uh, information that comes with that type of a, of a form question. Yeah, correct. The, the, the rating is, um, at least now, is pretty good. It's just a number, so that's, that's um, yeah, you can uh, use an average for that. But um, the, the multiple choice actually comes as a, as a JSON format, or at least as mm -hmm. a yeah, mm -hmm. format yep. value. So 
you have to search for the string that you're yeah that you're looking for and then count that and then yeah you can assume that and uh, display it in chart. So it yeah it's a little bit more and the other ones are just counting the yeah the, the number of values so that's that's pretty easy. And well depending on the data quality um, uh, yeah those values are uh, usually a pretty good uh, uh, map to the to the world but uh, yeah it, it might uh, become uh, yeah a bit less when uh, when the data quality is. Uh, that depending on the users agreed yeah, yeah. i saw your uh, one of the, the previous uh, uh streams right on data quality about uh, uh with dave yeah i'd never seen that platform before that was um yeah it, it was a really interesting conversation and I, I i did like that it went into the nuances of when is good good enough which i think a few people in the audience question like sometimes is 95 percent you know clean data good you know especially when you're looking at numbers that are 800 million like do you do you care at an 800 million dollar level is are you off by a thousand or something like that yeah yeah true and getting that last mile is, is usually uh yeah more, hard yeah very hard harder than uh, than getting the, the first 95 right yeah yep okay so let's move on to the next step because that was the uh, streaming data set um let me just uh, create a new one. So over here, you can uh, in just any workspace, you can create a streaming data set. And uh, I'm using the API version for this. And here you just put in uh, uh, the name of the data set. And then you can um, put in the, the value of, of all the questions. Um, so you only have those three uh, um, data types, the so text number and date time. So that's yeah the, the, the ones you have to choose from. Um, and you put just in the, uh, well, the names that you want to use here. So, uh, for example, experience, um, and, uh, and all the other fields, and then uh, um, uh, that's it. And if you have a star rating, right, then uh, you can use the number uh, for the score. And the one thing that you have to do is um, turn on the historic data analysis. That will make sure that the streaming data set uh, will save the values in that data set. Otherwise, it will um, buffer them for like 30 seconds or a minute and then um, it will be empty again. So is, if it's really a streaming data set like uh, telemetry data or something, then yeah, that might be a good case. Or like it will uh, yeah, become very big, but um, if you don't use that, then um, uh, yeah, make sure to put this switch, switch on. Um, so uh, let me have a look. Um, oh, that's uh, wrong. Yeah, okay. Um, and to tie it all together, um, I use Flow, so uh, well, Automate. Looking at uh, the one I used for this. Um, so that's this one. It's using a, a form as a starting point. So whenever a new response is submitted uh, to that form, I'm getting the details and then adding it to my, uh, to my data set. And you can just map these, uh, these fields. You get a, well, a, a list of uh, inputs that you can use from from the previous um, uh, responses, you can just um, uh, click on any of the yeah the ones that you want to map onto the name, experience, and, uh, and others, and then um, uh, well that's for connecting uh, this flow. I do. I just want to also take a moment to love that the um, <clears throat> the adding rows to the to a data set is it's a nice plugin. Like it's very little coding that is needed because i've also there's definitely yeah. been some power automate tasks that i've done where it's like i don't i'm not familiar that much with the language in here and i've needed to get a, expert help on it but this one at least is a is pretty much clicky clicky draggy droppy you select the yeah, things that goes here yeah you know code yeah correct yeah so I, I i do like that and um there was a question just on how to get to this page so just in case they they missed it uh, the create button over on the left under my flows that's how you create a new flow for power automate yeah. is, is that button right there right um, yeah, you could create one here or use any of the templates. There's quite yep. some uh, templates that you can use, for example. Um, can, can you just do a quick, uh, quick like demonstration? To, uh, can, uh, go and search for just Power BI because it, it might, it's interesting for people to maybe see what other types of um, of uh, Power Automate suggestions that they have. Because if you search at the top, um, the top search. Yeah, I'll oh, just see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think if you just yeah click enter, you'll, you'll see uh, a decent amount of um, try. Yeah, there you go. Like just just to 
quickly give sh uh, people an art of possible. Like there's many different things can be done from Power BI because they have a lot of connect. Uh, they have a lot of options for their connectors in here. So it's a it's quite a versatile tool for connection points to or from Power BI. Yeah, and and those are just the templates, right? So this is a template that was uh, either created uh, by Microsoft or submitted by anybody uh, yep. else. Yep. Um, so if you click this, then it's just a, um, a fully complete uh, flow. Um, that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, let's, no, let's try another one. Oh, there were different ones uh, here. Let's call one below. So, for example, um, send a te Teams message from Power BI. That's a really good use case, I think. Um, I still have to use my email. No. Um, uh, just to, um, uh, to to not have to start from scratch. Yep. Not sure if this was a good idea, but um, <laughs> oh, thanks. Now I'm uh, at Microsoft Teams. Right. Cool. Let's um, go the other route. Um, let's try it one more time. Now, maybe you can tell me this is uh, for a long time, there has been a trigger where when a data flow refresh completes, it can trigger an action. They did not have a data set refresh completion trigger yet. Um, is that still it? Has that been added or is that still an unavailable trigger? No, that's uh, unavailable indeed. Yeah, the data flow is coming up uh, later uh, uh, as one of the examples, but um, data set refresh complete is not. Um... Okay, yeah, no. it's it's kind of it, it's a little disappointing that it's not because like a date you would think if they can if they can have a trigger for a data flow refresh it wouldn't be that hard to know if a data set refreshes as well and then trigger something else because there's there's many situations i'm sure we both know of that you don't want something to happen until a data set in, in power bi finishes first then you want something else to happen after that and it's not sadly that's not an easy thing to do i'm sure there's considerations in the back end of why that's probably not a a, a trigger yet but it is one that I hope to see someday, because uh, I think it'll be really useful for a lot of scenarios. Yeah, yeah, uh, true. Um, yeah, you, you can of course use the, the API or um, yeah, check the, the refresh history of the data set, but um, it's, it, it's not an automated um, uh, yeah. Yeah, process right now, no. Um, let me check. Um, I think I actually completed this one. Um, so let's go back here. Um, so the steps I already did was um, create a flow, right? And the schema data set. Um, the Power BI report. Let's have a look at that real quick. So that is uh, actually this one. So this is the dashboard, right? So going to the report. Um, well, this is actually uh, just the report I created in the uh, Power BI desktop connecting to the streaming data set. And then just publishing it uh, here, and then the the important part is pinning all the uh, visuals to the to a dashboard, um, so that it refreshes automatically. Because if you're in a report, then you still have to refresh the page uh, here um, after the the users have entered um, uh, the the forms details. Um, so the data set does get updated, but it's not refreshed. Um, but if you go to the dashboard, then it automatically updates. Okay, so that's uh, yeah, the, the upside of the of this dashboard. So um, going uh, next, uh, of course, you can also um, uh, do other things like um, uh, sending uh, something to Teams. We already saw that the uh, template, right? Um, uh, you could do Twitter. I'm not um, sure if you still want to do that, but depending on the the people you talk to, uh, <laughs> it might vary. <laughs> um, and as I mentioned, with Power Apps, but um, uh, but also with with Flow, you can also write into a, to a database, not uh, for for example a streaming dataset, but just a, uh, a, C a SQL database. Um, but you have to be aware there are also premium connectors. So um, looking at uh, Flow, let's just create a new one. Um, Respond to submit it. 
then it creates that. Um, doesn't really matter. Let's see the problem. If you now create a new step, then you can search for, uh, for examples for Power BI. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is all the Power uh, BI actions. Um, and you already see here, this is a desktop code. Um, this connector is premium, so it means you need a, a Power Automate license um, to operate this. So if I now uh, click this, then we get a, a red um, a dot over here saying, um, well, it's now an invalid connection, but uh, if I uh, complete this, then it will say you need a, a Power Automate license for this to, uh, to turn the flow on. So, um, as far as I know, all the uh, Power Platform connectors are, uh, at least the Power BI ones, are, uh, are standard connectors, so free. Um, but you have to be aware that yeah, using a SQL database, for example, that is uh, at least a premium connector. Also, um, uh, yeah, filing um, an HTTP request, for example, is also premium. So, yeah, be aware that some connectors might be uh, premium and, uh, and others yeah, are not. Yeah. And one uh, other important thing about uh, the Power Platform um, is that you can set up data loss prevention policies. Um, it's also um, uh, well added to, to Power BI um, um, fairly recently. Um, but in the Power Platform, uh, actually in the Administrator Center, um, you can set up um, yeah, multiple policies, but the, the important part is that you have three buckets, uh, and those are business, non-business, and blocked. And okay. if you want to use um, connectors in one flow, then you have to make sure those connectors are in the same bucket, so it doesn't uh, matter if they're in the business or in the non-business bucket, but they have to be in the same bucket. So, for example, um, if I'm uh, using Power Automate and Power BI uh, and, for example, Teams, those are usually in the business bucket. So um, those are working together. But if I'm using Twitter, for example, and Twitter connector is in the non-business bucket, I don't want to send all my company data uh, out of the tweets, right? Um, so if that is the case, then your flow will not, um, uh, will not turn on and can be executed. And you will get an error message saying you have to uh, check the data loss prevention policy with your administrator and um, you know, either make changes to the to the policy or changes to the flow yep. before it comes. So it's important to, to notice in the, in the background. The next example, um, as I mentioned, um, the, the previous one was with uh, form. So getting data from, uh, from your audience, from users. And this one is um, uh, about Power Apps. So <clears throat> let's um, go to uh, megapowerapps.com. Um, and um, you have uh, different sources that you can start from. Also, um, uh, here you also have a premium connectors. So uh, SQL is uh, premium. Um, SharePoint Excel uh, uh, are uh, standard connectors, so that's, that's free to use. Um, just for now, let's uh, start with a, a blank app and use um, uh, a Canvas app. So that's mm -hmm. just a regular app. Let's call it a test. And then we get to the, the Power Apps environment. It's just an, uh, an online coding environment. And I tend to use, um, if I use Power Apps, I tend to use um, the coding a little bit more. In, in Flow, you can get away with yeah, just no code and clicking, dragging, and dropping. But in Power Apps, you usually do need um, a little bit more code to, to yeah, get some uh, code to mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so let's put in a uh, text input here. Um, let me first make it a little bit smaller. So to the settings of the Let's increase the font size. Yeah, that's better. Um, so, as I mentioned, um, for example, I want to use this uh, in a questionnaire uh, or in a quiz, for example. Um, so, I want to enter the name. 
Um, and I'm as, uh, specifically using the hint text and not the default name. So whenever I now enter the field and enter a value, then the, the text disappears. Uh, in my um, uh, it's the right way. So this will be the score. The hint text score. Um, well, we have two uh, fields from name and score. That's uh, enough actually. Um, but we do need a, a button to save the, the values, right? So, um, this is just going to be the save button. I'm not worrying too much about the, the layout right now. Um, and the next thing I would do, let's increase this a little bit. Um, if, I'm, uh, if I enter the values and click a button, then I want to um, start my flow and, and update the values. So um, I can actually create a flow right from, uh, from Power Apps. Um, mm -hmm. Let's just do it from blank. Um, so the trigger will be Power Apps uh, when I click on the button. So that's all I need for the rest for now. Um, this will be uh, well, actually. Um, do I have that? Oh, yeah. Um, let me check there. I created a schema data set uh, up front. Let me check if it's name score. Yeah, that's the one. So the streaming data set is already here with the name and the score and I added the date just to um, get a unique, uh, unique field in here. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, empty it for a second and turn it back on. So this will empty the, the streaming data set so I can uh, use it from scratch. Um, so I'm going to use Power BI and add rows to a data set. Uh, it's in the demo workplace. This is the data set. You can only select streaming data set, so that's why it's only showing one. And the name is always real time data. That's just uh, yep. the name of the data. So now yeah, I, have I don't believe that, that that can't be changed at all in the essentially any any time you have one of those. It's just it's based off of uh, each of the workspaces, right? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, so my name and score I want to get out of Power Apps. And um, so what I do is I ask in Power Apps. I uh, just click this one and then um, a variable gets added to my uh, my flow. So as well as the data set underscore name, I want to do the same for a score. Just have to click see more once and then I can do it again. So now I have two uh, variables connected um, in my flow and the date. Um, I'm just going to use um, the UTC uh, time. Um, one more. So uh, UTC now is good. And <clears throat> let's uh, save it. Let's give it a new name. Just do it, I think. I uh, created a uh, name itself. OK, that's good. Yeah, one uh, uh, data is king had one interesting mention is the, uh, the I guess one downside of uh, creating a flow from power apps is that you can't you have to you can't troubleshoot the flow in here if it fails so yeah I I'm assuming we'd have to save it then go to power automate then troubleshoot it from there yeah that's that's correct yeah yeah yeah. Okay, so now when I click the button, so the, the all select uh, function of the, of the button, uh, I should start the, uh, the flow. Uh, I should maybe lose the. Oh, it's okay. It's not, not going to look pretty, I think, but um, I'm not sure if this is going to work. If it works, it works. Yeah, th that's why. Just, uh, just leave it that way. So, um, uh, the run function is um, uh, is used to, to run the, the flow, uh, and then it uh, well it points me for the two variables I um, I used in the the flow, uh, and I want to connect the, the values of the 
of the text inputs there. We want to get name, the text of a name, and uh, actually the value because it's a number part of the uh, score. I also have the, the nice coloring, so you know what you're, uh, um, yeah, what what inputs you're, you're using. And uh, so um, this is actually all I need. But what I also want to do is after I um, click the save button, so after saving the, the results. Uh, also actually want to reset um, the fields so they are emptied again. So now I have my flow um, connected to the streaming data set. And um, let's get um, I'm guessing this is the one. Let me check. Yeah. Uh, let's do it here in the service. Um, let's get rid of this one for a second. Um, so this one is connected to the, the data set um, uh, I just mentioned. Um, so now whenever I uh, run this one, mm -hmm. uh, or let's get um, this one here. I click save. You, know, you, see, you see a little um, uh, waiting on the on the top, and then the, the values disappear. Okay, okay. Oh uh, yeah, there, there it is. Yeah. Um, so this is a report, right? So I, I that's why I have to refresh it here, but um, uh, that's okay for now. So, uh, let's give read also some points. Let's make it eleven. <laughs> right. dial, dial it to eleven. Yeah. So now we have two values. That's good. And and. If you ever make a mistake, you can also um, uh, do minus. So uh, also possible. Uh, and adding more values just will add uh, yeah, more uh, more colors to the mix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And the last thing is now because I'm uh, yeah now we're using the Power App in the in this minute right and the, the Power App report there. So the uh, the nice thing about this, um, if I go. Uh, back here, and uh, I go to my report. I can actually embed the Power App in here. So there's a Power Apps visual. It's a it's a default visual for Power BI. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And it actually mentions how to get started. So that's that's pretty easy. Uh, you have to select the fields from the data set. So that will be uh, name and score that I want to okay. use. And then you can uh, choose an existing app or also create a new one, but I've uh, already made one. There's one thing I forgot. Um, I did save it, but I didn't publish it yet. Um, so that's one thing I have to do. Uh, thought I got a confirmation. Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, publish this version. And then it will pop up in my. Uh, Report. So reach test should be there. And there it is. You can adjust this image also. I need to have some other ones. Yeah, there's some other ones that you also um, uh, know what, uh, what app it is. And after adding it here, uh, you have to go to the Power App Studio once to create that integration for uh, Power BI and Power Apps. So I'm going to close this one. Because it will open up the, the app again. And if you look closely to the left here, then you will see that the Power BI integration item uh, uh, pop up. It will be added to the to the Power App, uh, and then the connection between Power Apps and uh, well, that is Power BI integration. Um, and when that is added, then you know that the um, well the integration uh, between Power BI and Power Apps is uh, is made correctly. And now we already see the app here, so that's good. Um, let's go back to reading view. And I now 
point of values here. Um, I think I should do that once, yeah. Um, and I'm still in my um, uh, in my report, right? But it, this also works with um, uh, the same as uh, as the, the 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 previous solution. Um, if you put it in a dashboard, uh, this one already there, I think. You can pin the app. Um, system. Go to the dashboard, and then if we enter the values. That's a good one. Um, there was an old one in there, so that's um, for the sake of uh, not doing it wrong. Let's go back and do it again. So pin it, go back. And there you are. And it's a little bit big, I think. Okay, okay. Um, let me make it a little bit smaller. I don't know if we can't do it. There we go. So, and now we're entering values here. Um, yeah, you get the, the score right away, so uh, it's a live uh, feed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, that's the, the second solution. Um, now, we're uh, um, a little bit more sophisticated. <laughs> Um, My favorite one, you... actual right back. Yes, yes, actual right back. I'll be right back. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, looking at um, at the, the setup, um, this is a typical, uh, well, an, an simplified form of a, of a data platform solution. We have. Um, uh, Source systems on the left, uh, either on premises or in the cloud. We do some modeling, uh, some transformations in a data warehouse, um, and we end up with uh, a nice Power BI report. Right? It's a um, uh, very simplified format. Um, looking at where we can use that uh, the Power App, it's when we have the, the data in the report and we want to uh, adjust some numbers. For example, um, if you want to adjust uh, some um, some budget data, for example, or, or targets that you want to enrich the, the report with. Um, you could also use it for, uh, for example, adding comments to the to the report and write the comment into into the database. For example, with um, uh, with uh, financial reports that are, um, uh, if you enter values in the Power App, they are. Um, for example, saved with all the filters uh, that are uh, present in that report. And then when you go back to that specific set of filters in the report, then those comments that are entered uh, are patched from the, from the database and uh, displayed in the report, for example. That's a nice way for, uh, well, for controls, for example, to add some, some meaning to the data that you're, that you're seeing. Um, well, the Power Apps. Perhaps visual is uh, is already in Power BI, so that's that's a good one. You already saw that. Um, let's um, move on to uh, this one. This is the the actual uh, architecture overview for uh, for right back. So on the left we have data sources. We're using that in the, in Power BI to to get your data model um, right. We're using import mode um, uh, for for this particular source. Um, and after that, we want to connect, um, create a Power App, connect that um, with that Power BI integration uh, to your Power BI dataset. And the Power App itself is then um, connected to your data source. So if you have a, an Azure SQL, then you connect the Power App to that uh, to that specific table in your uh, in your database where you want to adjust the value. So for example, if you have a target, a target that you want to adjust, then um, specific users can use that Power App to, uh, to update the, the values in the database. And um, depending on the, uh, on the needs of the, uh, of the report and, and the, the, yeah, the data that is added, um, you can either uh, update the values into, um, into the data set with the next refresh, or you can also uh, have a direct query to that 
uh, one table that is connected to the power apps. Um, and if you only have that entire query, then you can uh, get results from that uh, from that uh, change in power app uh, power apps immediately. And you don't have to worry about the performance because the rest of the data is still in uh, in input mode. So um, yeah, it's it's not dire querying everything. So um, so this is the uh, the setup that we used. Um, again, be mindful of the the connections that you use because the um, well, the top three are all uh, premium connectors in uh, Power Apps, so that uh, means you need a license. Depending on the yeah, number of users for the Power App, you can either use a per user license or a per apps license. Um, and yeah, if you're, for example, using SharePoint, then it, um, uh, you don't need that license. So um, yeah, depending on where you want to save the data and, and what kind of data it is. Um, uh, you might want to uh, yeah, choose that and, and, uh, and choose a direction uh, up front. So, um, um, the direct query mode is so, yeah, just that, that you get um, the live edits, right? So, when you edit it uh, in, the, in the Power App, it, it gets um, through to the, to the report uh, immediately when you refresh that. So, you don't have to. Um, so, as I mentioned, there are standard and premium connectors. So, the, mostly the, the Microsoft ones are, um, so the, yeah, the Excel, SharePoint, also the Power Platform products are standard ones, so free. Um, and all the Azure ones, SQL Server, Azure SQL, but also um, uh, SQL on premises with a gateway, for example, are premium. So, you have to uh, pay any license for that. So, as I mentioned, the, the per app plan, you can um, uh, yeah, you use a prep plan per user, and, and there's also the value to pay as you go. And that means um, that they count the active users per app per month, for example. Uh, and yeah, they, they call it a per app plan, but actually it's a per user per app per month and also per environment. So, um, yeah, as I mentioned in the beginning, Power Platform has environments, so th there's always a, a default environment that is um, created automatically. I can show you, let me go here. So this one is the, the default environment for, for our company. And um, depending on uh, yeah, the company you're in, you might have uh, multiple ones here. Um, and the default environment is actually only used uh, or to be used for personal productivity. So not for um, apps or flows in production use, um, as we found out. Um, so whenever you want to uh, use uh, an app or a flow in production with multiple users. You have to create a new environment uh, and also uh, a new license is needed. So if you use dev test and prod environments, uh, then you, re you would need multiple uh, licenses for this. So yeah, depending on um, uh, how much you want to scale that, um, you might want to uh, plan that up front. And um, yeah, it, it, it might affect your uh, choice of uh, connector also. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, also with Power Apps, you have to take a, um, the data log prevention policy uh, into account because you also have these buckets that you have to uh, take care of. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do this uh, in a second. So let's first uh, look at the setup. Um, let's... Save it for a second. And go back. So uh, I already set um, set up the, the app and the and the reports. Um, let me have a look where it is. So it's the um, it's this one. So it's a detectable demo app. And I do that almost every time. You don't you don't want to click the name, but you want to click the edit button. 
Maar stil doe ik dat trouwens wel. Zo, <laughs> uh, so looking at um, this example. Uh, even een look. Um, I thought I had some slides in here to explain the setup, but I don't. It's, um, okay. Um, so let's uh, back to this one. Um, so the, the story um, on this report was actually um, uh, focused around the adventure work. So the, the the fictitious um, uh, cycle uh, company uh, from Microsoft back. Um, and it's using a sales and, and inventory um, report. And um, it's showing the, the, the number, of, number of products uh, still in inventory. Uh, and they made a, a little bit of a bad call, call um, on, on yeah, um, purchasing a little bit. Uh, too much of, of one uh, particular product, uh, and and that's what they want to uh, find out: what kind of products have mm -hmm. we still have in inventory, and uh, how can we get rid of them? Right. So maybe uh, with, with some promotion, um, we can get rid of the, the products and uh, then see what our um, uh, our sales will do if we if we give out that that, that promotion. Um, so looking at the the, the products uh, that are still in inventory, we see the. Yeah, the, the road 150, that's uh, a mountain bike. It's very high in, uh, uh, in inventory numbers. So looking at uh, the details of that one. Um, let's first look at this one. Um, uh, we, we, we see some sales uh, uh, until the end of the year. And if you look at uh, the sales forecast uh, for December, for example, um, it's, it's projected at, uh, at 60k. And what if we now um, uh, enter a, a sales promotion? Um, let's have a look at, uh, at the discount. It's, it's currently set at 30%. Um, so this is the app that is embedded in the, in the report. I can actually edit these values. Um, let's make it at 10% for now. And that gets updated uh, immediately. Um, and looking at the, this is only the promotion. Let's get the, um, also added um, a little bit of uh, price elasticity. So if we lower the price a little bit, then uh, more people will usually uh, buy the product, right? And if we, yeah, if we lower it um, like 30 or 40 percent, then even more. Mm -hmm. uh, products will get sold so that's the, uh, the reasoning behind the, um, that um, the parameter um, so for example i want to get a, a discount of, uh, of 30 percent um, display the numbers yeah now uh, it changes yeah, okay. yep Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now we see the, the change in the numbers, right? So it's 40% um, uh, of the um, of that number. Um, and uh, actually the last um, bar is, is to show how much, uh, let's say we have a, a price point of 50, um, mm -hmm. then making a drop 40% will um, well, make, make my sales uh, go up to uh, 45k. Um, and for example, if I um, if make it 50%, so we give a 50% discount. But if you then say that uh, uh, the price will, uh, or that the sales will go up much higher because of the, the, the higher um, discount, then uh, we already see that, that well, the sales will be even higher than with the 40% discount. So, I think it's combining the, the write back with the, uh, the, the ability to use the forecast tool, because that can help you kind of figure out like what doing this simulation, what number actually needs to be adjusted. So rather than having to constantly just do write back changes, you can do a temporary and faster one just using the, uh, um, the model itself. And then th that 
that helps you actually decide what is the one number I should probably push back to the system. So I, I think right. that that makes it a little bit easier rather than just constantly having to then edit the power app right back and, and do that, which is still doable, but it would take more time. Yeah, correct, correct. This is yeah, just the uh, what it parameter. So uh, mm -hmm. use that to uh, yeah to adjust um, uh, the values. Yeah, exactly. Very useful. I like the integrations with this stuff for sure. But like you know, the, the the what if parameter is a nice little extra touch on on top of it. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And the yeah the the, the threshold is easier uh, to use right uh, than than a whole power app. So. Yep. 100%. I think you can also build some right, um, yeah, some some nice um, solution with all your provided parameters, just using scenarios and um, yeah, using that to uh, uh, to your to, to your advantage. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions uh, in the chat? Nothing in the chat. Just a couple of comments from a little, little bit ago. Um... Just sure. from, from data is king but otherwise you know th this has been really good um i do think uh if there's any close we can start to wrap up here i think uh, in a few minutes um are there any things left that uh that you'd either like to review highlight or or uh show um as we kind of start to wrap up the the demo yeah. um yeah there's maybe one thing um one scenario that i um, uh, would like to show mm -hmm. um um so using um Power Automate to, to do all kinds of uh, things in Power BI. We're looking at um, the triggers. These are the triggers that you can use um, to, to start the flow. Um, there's a lot of uh, things about goals, but the most are about goals. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a button that you can use. So click a button in Power BI and then something happens. Yep, yep. And that's actually, well, eight in Power BI. And, and if you count this one, uh, um, when a data for a refresh is complete, that's, that's what you mentioned earlier, right? Um, but it's only data flow, so there's no data refresh um, yet. Might be a good idea to add that uh, to the next. <laughs> um, and after you have a trigger, then, um, well, these are the actions that you can uh, can take. Uh, also, pretty goal oriented. Um, so, this is the streaming data set I used. Uh, but you can also refresh a data set or even uh, run a query um, uh, against the data set. And there's also uh, an ability. To refresh a data flow, and um, well, using this Power Automate visual, you can uh, actually create a button in, inside your report to to start a refresh of the flow, and that's what I created here. So, I actually, have an uh, an Excel file on, on SharePoint uh, that I read in uh, via data flow. Then I use it in a, uh, just a regular Power BI data set, and then into a report, and I display uh, the values. So. Look at that uh, flow, for example, because that's um, uh, pretty nice. Um, that's not the right one. I need the power guy button. Um, so this one. And I will open the report also. So this is this one. So it's just on uh, some sample data. Um, I actually created from the, the Power BI desktop uh, financial sample uh, Excel file um, that I can use. And the well, the trigger is the, the button. So the button in Power BI. Um, after that, I'm going to refresh um, the data flow that is importing the Excel file. And then I, I'm using another trigger. Um, so you can not, not only use a trigger as a first stage, but also as subsequent stages. And I'm waiting for this data flow uh, to complete. And whenever it completes, then it's, uh, it goes into the condition. If it's successful, then it will refresh my Power BI data set. And you could even build in a, an error flow, right? If it's not successful, then refresh the data set again, or do something else, send an email, or send a message somewhere, and then yeah, someone else can, uh, can pick it up. And if we edit it here, we can actually uh, add the flow here. Um, you just have to add a, uh, some data to the flow. Uh, I don't use the data here, but you could use data from the report in the, in the flow, for example, to send messages to, uh, to people um, if you want that. Uh, but that's not necessary here. So I'm going to edit 
this one and I'm going to use the, the flow I just uh, selected. I've applied it so it's connected and I, then I can um, actually run it from here. So I'm just going to save it. And because this is um, uh, it's a regular workspace, so no uh, no premium here. Um, mm -hmm. I have to adhere to the eight refreshes per day for this data. Yep. So after eight refreshes, I'm I'm yeah, done with this uh, with this button. So if you have premium, then you can do this uh, unlimited. But um, um, yeah, with the pro only here eight times a day. But if I now uh, click the button, you see it's triggered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and it's uh, already done in, uh, in this report, but if you now uh, go back here, you can see that it's running uh, right now, one second to go. And this will just, well, it's, it might take a few minutes for, for this one to pick up, so you don't have to wait for it. But um, uh, well, whenever this uh, data flow completes, because this is only the, uh, the initial firing of the, of the data flow, it usually takes uh, yeah, 30, 40, 50 seconds for the data flow to complete and then for this trigger to pick it up a uh, few more seconds, but um, that's okay. Oh, there it is already. So now we see that um, also my data, data set is uh, refreshed. So all with, uh, all with one flow and then um, uh, I just have to refresh this one. I think we had some bad data in here. It might be adjusted, but... It's so nice well, to be able to give you, users that option, though. Uh, if you edit uh, the Excel file, for example, and then uh, yep. yeah, refresh the, the, the whole chain again, and um, you get the update right away. And mm -hmm. uh, depending if you're in uh, a Power Premium, then um, um, yeah, so that might uh, might work for for multiple edits uh, a day. But uh, you have to be aware of the of the limits that you can use. So that's yeah, think, um, yeah. Uh, it's like bu buttons can be really useful for trigger and refreshes. It's nice to give the users that option sometimes if it's like, I know it normally uh, runs at 7 a.m., but we actually have a 3, 8, 3 p.m. stand up today. I, I just want to see some some new data, new data in here. And that maybe that's done like a couple of times a month or a few times a year. And it avoids the need to do any kind of like composite models or more you know fancier yeah. stuff in the modeling. So the, 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 to me, this is a simpler solution to allow to keep the model simple, but I'll uh, give it a button action to trigger certain events uh, related to the, to the data in the back end. Yeah, correct. And, and yeah, for example, during the month and close, uh, the financial uh, departments yeah, might want to refresh the data a little bit quicker. So that's, yeah, that's also a good use case to, uh, yeah, to refresh it um, by the users. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Now, Nikki, I appreciate you showing all this today. I think it's given me a lot of um, scenarios of uh, being able to do streaming data sets, uh, some right back scenarios as well, also just using buttons with that. But I, I think between Automate Flow and Power BI, there, there's a lot of different ways to connect them together, either with uh, one trigger and the other or vice versa. So um, lo lots of good use cases for this. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice to be here. Nice for, uh, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Let me uh, I'll flip us back to, there we go. This larger screen. But yeah, thanks for um, for everything today. This is, uh, it was really nice to, to be able to get you on um, and also have you help me usher in the you know, 100 stream and everything as, as well. So. Um, I think yeah. um, um, from that perspective, uh, but like I tell with any of my other guests, I will definitely be happy to have you on at some point again in the future. Uh, it's, it's nice as these products continue to evolve and we always come up with new stuff to talk about. So I'm sure there won't be hard to, to make that happen either. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, there's plenty of stuff to, uh, to talk about, yes. Always, yeah, exactly. Well, um, otherwise, thanks take, for taking time out of your evening. Enjoy the rest of your uh, Friday night and weekend. Um, and yeah. I'm sure I'll see you somewhere in the conference circuit as well this year, if not SQL. Yeah, bits. certainly. SQL bits. Is, uh, oh, yeah, SQL bits. Uh, then, yeah. There you go. Me, so uh, I'll see you there. Excellent. Sounds good. And everyone, uh, thanks for joining uh, for all of this. And uh, have, your, have a good weekend. And I'll see you online next week as well. Yes. Thanks for joining, everyone. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships or our merchandise store for cool swag. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on your social